there friends i am so excited to be working on a new project today one that i am super excited about i am on a kick i am on i have a new obsession and it's all about pop-ups um, you probably saw and if you haven't you can check uh, here in my channel that i created a valentine's card and it was it was a pop-up card it wasn't like super like extravagant or anything like that um but ever since that car i've been wanting to work uh on things that pop up and i used to do it a lot when i used to make cards if you saw that video i went ahead and gave a little bit of um a little background on that oh i didn't want to show you like that so here is what we're gonna be working on but on this little journal here um this project here was my first time doing it so i didn't have a chance to do a video and people have been asking this design is not mine it is by martha stewart but let me show you i'm gonna open it like this you guys have seen a few pages in the, on in this uh art journal and it's starting to get chunky and all kinds of little bits showing. And so here it is. I, I, how can I not be obsessed? It is a beautiful, you can see how it's closing. And sometimes you kind of have to help it this one. But this was my first one. So I'm hoping that, yeah, there, see? Once it gets coached into folding, it goes, all the flowers wanna close back in their original folded form. So this again, like I said, was designed by Martha Stewart. It is in her blog and you can just type on the, if you're on Pinterest, you can type a Mother's Day pop-up card and it should be in there all i did uh is i was just looking for pop-ups and this one was there and like i said hers was a card but i didn't want to make a card i wanted to put it in one of my journals and this of course is in my art jur journal and there's all kinds of goodies in here some of these uh, techniques are in one of my uh, big pictures classes uh, and and it is about mixed media so I went online and found the template to make the flowers. So here it is, as you can see, it's by Martha Stewart. And you can go ahead and grab that. I, when I did this one, I actually did a little freehand, a uh, little template. There is mine and wouldn't you know it, I mean, I was kind of shocked at almost how close mine was to hers. Um, so basically this template here will produce a uh, bouquet of flowers in this size. So I'm going to be working on, on a journal because I've already done it in my art uh, altar book. So I thought, well, where else can I do it? So this is a quote journal that is still has a few pages undone. So I figure, you know what? I'm just gonna do one here. It will help me get this book done, this journal done. And I get to work on the video for you. So we're gonna get started. I uh, I felt that it would be best to do a voice, not a voice over, but just uh, basically talk at the same time that I was working on the design because uh, it can get a little bit I'm not confused. It's really not that hard. At least I don't think it is. So let's get started. Um, let me go back to here and show you this background here is actually tissue paper. Uh, somebody thought that it was fabric, but it's actually tissue paper. Uh, I wanted to have kind of a neutral, but yet a little bit of pattern. Uh, and so this was perfect. So I think I'm going to imitate the same uh, on this one here. And then I found a, it's, this is not a quote, it's actually uh, lyrics to a song by Allo Blanc and David Corey. Uh, <clears throat> and I just kind of 
kept it simple and took out some of the words that just kind of this you know repeated so i was able to fit the lyrics on both sides and it's a beautiful song really beautiful song so uh anyways so i'm going to kind of keep it in the same but obviously i'm going to do a quote because i'm working on my quote journal so we are going to need the journal the template and the paper because this is a type of what i call an origami uh, i decided to use um, wrapping paper i found this beautiful wrapping paper and i'm going to move it like this so you can see that it has that ombre effect uh, i found it a tuesday morning for 3.99 i believe for this roll and i I loved it because of the color and because it was an ombre. If you, and look, can you see? It's a little bit see-through there. Um, so it's very thin, but it has a very plasticky feel to it. So I, it's, it is very strong. Here is one of the f uh, flowers from that other, uh, the, my first attempt. And this is what the flowers, uh, what we're going to get to, and we're going to need... Uh, seven of these uh, one in the center and six are going to go all the way around so uh, you could try using uh, a, a pattern paper but it's going to be thicker and it, it can get bulky I think the thinner paper when you start scoring it it holds the 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 little uh, the valleys and the mountain folds really well and you want that um, because then it'll be easy for the flower to close to close and keep its shape so that is one suggestion that i have um, to try and find uh, wrapping paper it doesn't have to be this ombre effect it could be a solid uh, pattern it's it'll be all up to you what you want to use i think that using a um, a paper that is just a solid color meaning there is no pattern to it will work best I used uh, one of my stamping up uh, pens and I use the brush end over here to draw the inside like um, I don't know the little stems of the flower and I think that's kind of what made them look like poppies poppy flowers which is one of my favorites too um, so that's uh, those are some of the tips that I have for you. We are also going to need a bone folder. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. We are going to start by cutting more than seven squares because uh, believe me, sometimes uh, the folds don't go too perfect. And so I think it, it will help if you have extra pieces that you can choose from when it is time to cut uh, and put together the flower. And like I said, I love that this paper had uh, this ombre effect because it is going to be helpful when it's time to put the flower and it just kind of adds a much better look. So I'm just gonna randomly cut some pieces and then we're, I'm gonna do my best to make sure I get squares. I'm not gonna cut all of it in front of you to save some time, but just to kind of give you an idea, our squares are gonna measure four by four and try to, if you use some sort of paper like the one I'm using, I guess you can choose uh, where you want the colors to uh, fit on your design. So I'll cut all my squares and I'll be right back.
So there's a, a certain way of folding and cutting your paper to avoid um, cutting the actual flower in half. So after many trials, this is the best way that I figured how to do it. We are going to fold uh, right to left and then up. And all you're doing is making sure the edges meet. Oh my goodness. And then down the upper right corner to the lower left corner. And you can use your bone folder. So what you want is to have all the edges of the paper on the top. So if I open the petal or the, the fold, folded paper like this, you can see that all the edges are here and here and there. All the edges. The folded parts are at the bottom and on the side. So with all the edges on the top, we're going to put our template and with a pencil, you can kind of write a or draw a guideline. I'm so sorry. That's my dog barking and I'm going to trim one to show you. And when we open it, we should have a complete flower. So we're gonna do the same for the rest. We're gonna go up. Oh, I said left to right, huh? Okay, well, whatever. You can go left to right. And then from bottom to the top, and then the right corner to the left bottom corner. Make sure that everything lines up. So the right to the bottom left. I'm gonna use my template again. And you're basically at the very edge. My little handy dandy trash bag here. I love that. So there's another one. So I'm gonna do one more and then I'll go back and do all the rest and come back when they're all done. my last flower and I ended up with only eight. I'm gonna save my little template and now we are going to cut the flowers and glue them so they end up like this. So if we count we start with two then four with a total of eight petals. We are going to cut one of the petals out and you can just follow the creases. You are going to completely cut 
one out and you are going to use some sort of adhesive and you are going to put glue on one of them. Well, that's not working really well. And then you're going to put this petal on top of the other one. And so now we end up with, here is where I folded the two, one on top of the other, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we started with eight, and now we end up with six petals. And after working on that first layout, I learned that if you just go back and kind of line things up and refold, it would help when it's time to put it all together. Refold it, re-enforce uh, the folds. And there is one of the poppies. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and speed up the video so that I can finish all my flowers and then I will be right back to show you what the next step is. So all my flowers are done. I will have to select the one I want to go in the center because everything else is going to get glued based on the flower that is going to be in the center of the, of the whole bouquet. Now I have, it's pretty much dry. I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming. Here's my page ready to go, it's dry, and it's now gonna be time to start assembling uh, the flower, the bouquet. So I'm going to pick a center, the one that's gonna go in the center. So I've decided that I have these two that are the lightest ones. So um, I'm gonna pick this one to be in the center. Everything is going, all the gluing is going to be based on this flower. So I'm gonna set this aside for a second. And last time I ended up using this bottle here to help me add some of the glue. So I'm going to take away one of these so I don't get confused because there's only uh, six of them plus the center flower. So we're gonna pick one and any petal will do. So we're going to attach two petals together, one from this flower and one from this flower, the back side of it. And this is why I was telling you that this little, using this uh, bottle here helped me uh, when it came down to gluing the flowers together. So what I'm going to do, this, this is where the two petals were uh, attached to each other. So I'm going to find the same one here. This is where these two are attached. So I'm going to start with that and do that here. And so I have attached these two and I'm kind of making sure that everything is lining up as best as possible because that's when things are going to start folding. So now that these two are attached, I'm gonna grab a second flower and find the two that are attached together and that's the one I'm going to attach to my center flower on the second petal. Making sure that everything lines up together. Now, the, the one tip and one very important thing to remember is to only put glue on the very top of the petal. So not the entire petal, it's attached to the back of this one, only the top part, because that's gonna give the paper uh, a chance to move and bend and fold back and close into itself. So make sure that when you're attaching your flowers, only the top part of the petal has glue. 
So now here is my center flower. I've attached this petal to that side, then the second flower to the second petal. And now these two flowers are next to each other. They're also gonna get glued like this. So the next petal that I add, it's going to get attached to the third petal of the center flower. And then it's gonna lay next to this one and then these two will get attached together. So I'll keep repeating that so that it makes sense. So right now, the right flower and the left flower are both attached to the center. And now I'm going to attach both of them together putting only glue on the very top of the petal and making sure everything lines up. So now we have kind of a triangle with three flowers and we're gonna repeat all the way around. So here's my center flower. Here's the third petal. I'm gonna grab another flower, find the two that were overlapping together Put a little bit of glue on the top part. Make sure everything lines up. Here's my third petal from my center flower. And now that is attached. Now these two are right next to each other. So these two petals are gonna get glued together. making sure everything lines up. Now, so now we have three flowers around our center one. So I'm gonna go to the fourth petal, grab another flower, find where the two glue together, and I'm going to add glue to the top, and then add it, here's my center flower, So now I'm going to attach these two together right here. So now I have two, four around the center flower. I got two more left, two more petals left. one more flower left and one more petal left from our center flower. Here's where these two meet. These two are next to each other, but also this one now has met up with the one that we first started. So that means I have to glue these two together and these two together. Is the center and then we have one two three four five six flowers you can see them a little bit better like this now we need to try and fold it back within itself so that we can glue it right in the crease of our book so here is our flowers our bouquet You can start by folding the center one in half. And if you put your fingers in here, 
you can see there's our center flower. I'm going to squeeze it in half and, and it just kind of automatically wants to fold within itself. So to show you what it looks like on the under, here's our center. I'm going to fold it in half and then put my fingers in the la on the other outside ones and squeeze and everything just kind of wants to fold together like this. It's kind of hard to be honest to make sure all the creases lined up. So what I did is once everything bent and folded together, I just kind of very gently did that just to reinforce it. And you might have a few little uh, wrinkles inside, but that's okay. But you can kind of see how it wants to close right back into itself. This might take a little practice for you. And so now we're going to glue it to our book. And this is also uh, very particular what we have to do. We are not going to glue the entire flower, the underneath part to this one side of the book. We are only going to put glue in the center of the uh, Two, one, two, three, one, two, three, the center petal. So you end up with three on this side, three on this side. If I flip it, it will be the same thing. I will end up with three on this side and three on this side. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue also on the just the top part. I'm going to center it into the book where the edges of the petals are not quite in the middle of our book because then it might kind of be hard for it to close. Just push it a little bit off to the side and then press. And then let's close it. And now imagine if we have put glue here on our middle, our middle petal, we have one, two, three, one, two, three on the middle one. So I'm going to pretend just to show you if this is going to get glued to that side. I still think I'm not quite in the center there. I'm gonna go up a little bit more. It seems like once I opened it, it didn't look right. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top. And I'm gonna close it. Now let's see what happens. Not strong enough. <laughs> we need to, I need to add a little bit more glue. This time, now the other side. I noticed that on her tutorial, she uh, used leaves. I just happen to have these leaves and I believe these ones were from Michael's uh, and I'm going to use these. Got it. And she had placed one leaf there and I believe another here and one underneath on the other side and that. So if it's attached like that, it would close. So that's my test. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna put glue on the leaves. I want the leaves to kind of get glued by themselves underneath the flower like that and then only the flower itself will open and close and the leaves will stay put. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue over here. Now it needs to have the freedom to open and close uh, without being too tight. So don't pull your flower too far apart. Um, 
because again, it's, it's gonna make it harder. So then if I do that, then it closes. So I'm gonna put glue on this side. And again, I was, I hope this is not something that has completely scared you and throw you off. I think it's a beautiful project. It's just a matter of not being afraid of it, just jumping in and uh, just go for it. Just go for it. So now that I've attached that, when it's open, I know that even when I completely open the book, this is as far as the, um, the flowers are going to open. Now, to close it, ta-da! The more you do it, the easier it gets for the flowers to remember which way to go. I love it. I think it's looking just like my other one. Again, we only put adhesive on two petals. There's a few little wrinkles, but that's okay. I'm totally fine with that. And sometimes you kind of have to, there. Can you see how they lay flat? And now I'm going to add my leaves. Let's see, I have one more. Where else can we put one? I hate to be that even and do two on either side. Now, when you do that, let's be careful because if I put these flower, these uh, leaves here, I gotta make sure that they're still going to allow the flowers to close, and they do. But I think, I think I like that better. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the the uh, leaves because they are a little stronger. I was gonna use that, but I think I'm gonna use um, some glue dots. don't mind if things stick out from my book you can see they stick out on that side too and one more down here I think that everything will fit and yes everything closes this one I could put more glue, but I want them to have the freedom to expand. So now I can go ahead and add the little uh, centers and I'm gonna let them dry. So this is, I guess it worked for the best for me not to add these at the beginning anyways. I, this is how I did it when I uh, did the first uh, test in my other book. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go around and just add the marks. And because I'm done messing with my flowers, I'm not gonna take a risk and smudging them. So you can kind of see that there. There is no perfection in nature, which is funny because I think it's the opposite. Everything looks perfect but it's random and I think that's what it's the beauty of it this again would make a beautiful card a Mother's Day card that's 
the whole point of why Martha Stewart put this tutorial on. It was to make a Mother's Day card but I wanted to um, try it out and kind of do a something to step out of my comfort zone and add this to a journal. And look at how pretty it's looking. And let me just be careful. I'm going to hold those. And you just, there's no wrong or right way to do this. And there you go. So now I just have to uh, figure out where I'm gonna do my writing. I won't show you that part because I feel like this video, it's already way too long. I will show you photos at the end of the finished uh, completed project with a little bit of writing all the way around because I still gotta figure out where everything is going to fit. But I hope that you are not afraid of this project. There is, with everything, in order to be good, you have to practice. So you can definitely give this a try uh, using whatever papers you want. And once you're comfortable with it, uh, put it in your journal or make a car or an altered book or however you want to use it if you decide to give it a try. Um, thanks again. I will have links to the tutorial that uh, Martha Stewart. It says that there's a video, but there isn't because I tried to watch it and there is no video to it. So the only thing I had as reference were the photos. So I hope that my video is just shows a little bit more clearly how to put this beautiful project together. And if you do do it, I would love to know uh, and hopefully maybe even see some photos. So thank you so much uh, for watching. Um, if you do not push yourself, you do not, you will never know how much you are capable of. And this is a perfect example. Let's push ourselves a little bit and try something that's just a little harder. And then you will see that at the end, once it's done, you're gonna feel so great that you took the time to learn it and to do it. I love, 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 love this uh, tutorial. So thank you so much. Until next time, take care. Bye.